So if you've got a smaller card, which, you know, you, you can't even really find these 16 meg cards. But when I first started taking pictures, they were the cards were four and eight megs. Um, but if you've got a smaller card and you've got a six megapixel camera, you can't get very many pictures before you have to take the card out or transfer the images. So to answer that question, uh, the the um, storage makers have made these cards significantly bigger and you can get storage capacity up to uh, you know 8 12 I think I even saw like a 34 gig card not very long ago you can get these humongous cards and storage capacity and they can store a lot of pictures so um, you you can get larger cards but do know that the megapixel size of your camera will affect how many pictures you can get on before you have to um, start deleting some or move them over to your computer. The other thing that affects how many pictures that you can get on this card is uh, what file format you have. Now if you have a point and shoot camera chances are the only choice that you have is what's called a JPEG or JPG. Now when the um, the engineers were putting all this together. They had to figure out a way to fit information onto these little teeny tiny cards that they used to have. And they also had another problem. They had, most of us were still on dial up and we wanted to share our pictures. And I'm sure a lot of you had, um, you know, when you were dialing in via AOL or however you got on the internet, you went to look at a, a website and somebody had a full picture up on the website and it loaded one line at a time, one line at a time, one line at a time. That was really painful, painfully slow. Um, so the engineers, what they did was to, to keep the download time quick and to make sure that they could get Im enough images stored on a card, they created this JPEG format. Now, the, the JPEG format has improved. The quality has improved significantly as with, you know, just about everything with digital cameras. But what a JPEG does is it compresses your image. In other words, we've got those little teeny tiny squares of information, the pixels. And when your microprocessor on your camera is taking that information and transferring it over to the card, and it's called writing it to the card, what it does is it goes through the individual squares, the pixels, and it looks for values that are are almost identical and when they see two or four or a chunk of values or small squares those pixels that are all the same they compress it and then they move it over to the card that saves storage capacity now what happens is um, that works just fine as it compresses the image but when we go into photo editing and we do a lot of photo editing with these JPEGs, every time we save and we change the image, it, it compresses it a little bit more. So JPEGs, if you do a whole lot of photo editing, can become kind of soft. So there, there is a little bit of a drawback to JPEGs, but it's not terrible. You can still get pretty good pictures if you don't go overboard with the editing. And for the most part, JPEG is a standard format that all photo processors will accept and all browsers will accept. Now there is another type of image file format and it's referred to as RAW. Now RAW is just as it sounds. The, the other thing that happens when you're taking a picture, especially in automatic, is your camera, uh, as you push your shutter down halfway, it, that, it looks at the light value and it says, oh, this light is, we're shooting under fluorescent, let's say, and it's really green. 
So what I need to do is automatically change that color or put a filter down, a virtual filter, and make sure that the color looks right. But with RAW, um, what happens is your camera, you're telling your camera, I don't want you to do that. I want the scene to look exactly like it was when I took the picture. And then I'll take it into my photo editing software and render it the way I remembered it. So that is one of the functions of RAW. Now the other th function of RAW is unlike the JPEG where the JPEG as it's being written, they're, they're compressing those pixels together. RAW keeps each and every pixel its unique pixel. So there, there is no loss to the format. It's uh, uh, completely uncompressed and uh, ready to be photo edited in any way you want. And it won't c continue to lose that uh, valuable information. So it stays nice and sharp. But the drawback to RAW is that it is uncompressed and it takes more room on your cards. So you're probably going to have to have a few cards because RAW will fill up your cards, the memory on your cards, fairly quickly. But it is, uh, if you're a serious shutter bug, you'll, you'll come to love the things that you can do in photo editing software using RAW. But I do want to remind you that RAW is, it tends to be on those hybrid cameras and on the digital SLRs only. It's not generally a file format that you will find on a point and shoot camera. So as we're looking through the LCD screens, you're probably not going to see it.